This is like the uh, church I used to go to, I think, with that front row. My minister always used to make me, who went to the back row, come immediately to the front row before he started. I won't do that, but I would like to say how excited we are to see so many people here tonight. This is a wonderful crowd. I know there's a lot of things going on, and for you to take the time to be here um, is greatly appreciated. We think this is a very important topic. I know the school district uh, has been working really hard with some of the people you're going to hear from tonight to move uh, an agenda that's a very important one uh, forward at a time when you know our school systems are being challenged in so many ways. And what we're going to do tonight is explore some of those changes uh, through the uh, career program. First thing I'd like to say, though, is in, in the room tonight, we have some people that have been very instrumental in moving this along. I noticed that uh, uh, Maggie Lewis Butler, where are you? Could you stand up, our, one of our board members? Come on, Maggie Lewis Butler. And a, and a, and a long, time, long time friend. When I was a, a teacher back at the beginning of time uh, at Bellevue Middle School, Maggie uh, taught me everything that I know. And I uh, appreciate that. And then, of course, our board chair, Joy Bowen. And, and Joy. Joy's been taking a, a leadership role. Many of the schools we're going to talk about tonight are in Joy's district, a district that uh, we like to call the innovation zone because we're doing some things in an area there that, that are very, very important to us. I see Sue Dick here from our local chamber. Thank you, Sue, for coming. You know this is very important. If there's anybody out there I missed, uh, I apologize because it might be my memory or my eyesight, but I would like to say there are many talented people in the room that are uh, educators from our district, both uh, in schools as principals and assistant principals, district leaders, teachers, and others. And we come here tonight because we want to talk a little, about the, a little bit about the superintendent's career and professional education uh, program. And this roundtable discussion tonight is to explore CAPE and explore the different possibilities that we have with this program. And uh, it's, it's, it's very much my pleasure to be here because I know all the people that are up here have a very sincere interest in the future of this. And for the purpose of introducing tonight and to introduce the program to you, I'd like to bring up the person who's made all this possible by helping us put it together, and that's our superintendent, Jackie Ponce. Thank you, David. First, I just want to thank each and every one of you for being here. What a great crowd, and uh, I really appreciate it. And uh, it's a great evening. And whenever we talk about education here in Leon County, we seem to get a great crowd. And uh, I'm just real excited about the CAPE Act, and uh, that's why I wanted to have this community conversation to talk a little bit about it. Uh, I had the opportunity the other day to speak to the state board, and I was up there almost a half hour. And some of the things I said, I'm going to say again, but, you know, I really think we should salute uh, Senator Gates and Senator Mumford for their leadership on the CAPE Act. Uh, this is cutting edge, and this is where we need to be, lining up our, uh, the jobs of the future with industry-level certification and making sure that we're powering our students so that they'll be able to compete in today's workforce. And there's not anything that drives the economy like having our students ready to participate in real jobs, high wage jobs, high skilled jobs. And I think we have to accept the fact that we're doing a lot of good things in education, but we have to do more. And as I walked into Godby, I couldn't be prouder to think of the, the fact that I think we've got 12 industry level certifications here at Godby High School. And we started this uh, several years ago and we lined up Riley, Griffin and Godby uh, with the technology and to make sure that we could provide this industry level certification. So I'm real excited about that. But I wanted to mention Senator Legg, Senator Mumford, Senator Gates, and all the leadership that's been involved in this act. And I think this might be one of the most important pieces of legislation that we've moved forward in several years. And this is something that is so nonpartisan. It's something that everybody should be supportive of. So. I'm real excited about it, and I told the state board that uh, the other day when I had the opportunity to speak in front of them. I want to introduce our panel and just say a few things about them, uh, and, and let's recognize them for their leadership. First, our former superintendent, Bill Mumford, was superintendent here for 10 years. Uh, he's been a good friend to me. Uh, what an advantage I have as a superintendent when I have to make a tough decision. I can call him, 
And if it goes good, he'll take the credit. If it didn't, he'll tell me I made that decision. But no, he was a great leader. And now, at one of the most difficult times that we've ever faced in education, during a tough economy, a lot of different things going on, having his leadership in the Senate. So let's give him a big hand for being here tonight. I also want to recognize our president of uh, Tallahassee Community College, Jim Murdoff, for his leadership. Uh, he is like a partner to me, and we talk probably every two weeks about education, about how we have to be lined up, how we have to be working together. He's been to school board meetings. Uh, he's in our schools. He's just a different type of leader, and let's give him a big hand, our president of TCC. The next individual I want to introduce is Mark Wilson, the CEO of the Florida Chamber President. And Mark has been a leader not only in workforce development and economic development, but he's been a leader in education throughout this state. And I've watched what he's done, I've watched how he's influenced our entire state, and we're fortunate to have his leadership. And he's also a friend of mine, and we meet every once in a while when he has time just to have coffee and talk about issues, and he's helped me a lot on different perspectives of issues and just want to thank him for his leadership not only here in Tallahassee but throughout the state of Florida and let's give Mark Wilson a big hand. We're going to have a real simple uh, community conversation tonight. Each one of the panelists is going to take about five minutes uh, to talk about uh, the role of uh, not only the CAPE Act, but the role of workforce, the role of education as far as lining things up and how we should operate as a, not only a school district, but as a state. So we're gonna start right now with about five minutes from each panelist talking about these issues. Uh, our moderator, Dave Clark, will come back at the end of this. We're gonna take questions uh, from, from the audience, any questions that you have. We have some that were sent in earlier that people wanted to ask and then we'll answer those questions and then we'll close by having uh, Shelley Bell, the principal of Godby and Gwendolyn Lynn Thomas, the principal of Griffin, just talk about what a difference these industry level certifications have made in their individual schools. So at this time, I want to uh, introduce uh, and start with President Murdaugh at Tallahassee Community College and let him talk about the role of the community college and uh, also the K-12, how we can be lined up, and uh, plans that he has related to these topics. President Murdoch. Uh, thank you, Jackie. Should I do that from here? Is this fine? Okay, good. I, being first, you don't know what the protocol is. Uh, <laughs> first and foremost, um, let me express my appreciation, Superintendent, for you arranging this event. It's an incredibly important thing. and. I'm very proud to be uh, invited and to be a, a participant in this. Uh, the superintendent and I have had a number of conversations uh, over the past two and a half years uh, that I've been president of Tallahassee Community College. And I think one of the exciting things, I'll, I'll tee up the CAPE, but I'm certainly gonna let the senator speak to CAPE in particular, uh, because he's far more knowledgeable about CAPE than I am. But what I'd like to talk about is the importance, regardless of the legislation that's being proposed or whatever passes out of the, uh, uh, the session this year, the importance that we view education in our community as a seamless enterprise that all of us are responsible to work together to make sure uh, is available to each and every student that we have uh, in, our, in our region. You know, I, I felt for a long time that we have been far too siloed, and we think about K-12 separately, then we think about college, and we think about college separately, then we think about our universities uh, in our community. I'm really proud to tell you that I think behind the scenes, uh, we've made way more progress than most people in the community know. You know. We've broken down those silos, and the conversations that we have on an ongoing basis about working together to make sure there are pathways, seamless, pathways for students is an incredible step forward for the student. And we often like to say, students don't really care. Um, they, whether it's Tallahassee Community College, whether it's Florida State, Florida A&M, or a private enterprise once they leave the K-12 system, um, we don't really care whether it's K-12 system or whether it's a charter school or a homeschooler. What we need to be thinking about 
is making sure that every student in our community gets the, not only gets the education, but also has the pathway, and that's critically important. What I find exciting about this, candidly, uh, many of you know my background, I'm more on the workforce side of, of growing up in this business than I am on the, on the academic side. So I care deeply that what we do has two characteristics, number one, market value, and number two, social value. Uh, what, we, what we're talking about here, of course, is making sure that we provide market value to our students. And I will, would say that I think philosophically we would all agree that, that in education, it, it's easy to mislead students into believing that the only pathway to a future is a, is a degree. And we forget the fact that there are so many people who benefit from the credentials and certifications that can be provided during high school or post high school that allow people to live a life with dignity, to earn a living and live a life with dignity. And it's not all about a degree. But what's exciting about the pathways is the pathways create not a terminal exercise with a credential or a certificate, but the beginning. Someone can earn a credential and then if we do our job as a college working in concert with uh, the superintendent and the school system, that credential should be stackable and should lead to additional opportunities for education where they don't have to start over again. And, and we're, we're tearing those walls down and I think in our community making incredible progress. The other thing I, I would like to mention though, in addition to the market value of what we do, I, I do fiercely believe that we have a responsibility to provide social value. We produce citizens. All of us in this room produce citizens uh, that will participate in democracy and that will uh, someday have leadership positions and what they will contribute back to our community will far exceed the skills that we give them or even the education that they receive during their time with us. So I'm, I'm going to be brief because I think uh, the others have far more to offer perhaps in this regard. Uh, I simply will end by saying I think we are making incredible progress and have been making incredible progress of making sure our students are afforded the kinds of pathways um, that allow everyone to choose among the alternatives and figure out where they wish to take their life. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Murdoch. What I, what I like mostly about uh, the position that, that you're in is that synergy between the economic piece and the work that you do with the uh, community college because that's, that's the blend that we absolutely need in your background speak so directly to the things that we're talking about tonight, and I appreciate your leadership and all that, and I know we all do. Uh, I'd now like to uh, have Mark Wilson say a few words and talk a little bit about the Chamber and their role. Great. Thank you so very much for that introduction. And um, Sue Dick from the Tallahassee Chamber, it's great to have one of our good partners here as well. Um, and Senator Monfort, thank you for being a co-sponsor of this important <coughs> legislation with Senator Gates um, and Leg and others. Um, also, I, I live in this community and we work in this community, but we spend a lot of time outside of this community, 67 counties, the Florida Chamber statewide. And I have to tell you, I, I get to do this kind of town hall meeting uh, in most of the other counties, but it is a real blessing and honor to be back here with four of my uh, peers and counterparts, people that we work very, very closely with. Uh, either in the legislature or, as Jackie said, over a cup of coffee or, or with Jim. And, and so I think it's really great that here we are, you know, right, uh, get to sleep in our own bed tonight and talk about what's going on in our community. And I hope we get to do more of this. And so thank you very much for the invitation and for the, the opportunity to do this. Um, I want to give a little perspective on, on why. Uh, why does the business community care so much, not just about education, but also so much about this particular issue. And it's interesting, if you travel the state with me, or even the country for that matter, many people ask me, Mark, why does the Chamber of Commerce care so much about education? You know, you're a business group. Why are you getting involved in 30 education issues a year? And why do you care about CAPE? And uh, the answer is real simple. If, if you look at the future, uh, it, not just of this county, but if you look at the future of our country, if you look at where the world's going, Education or, or talent is absolutely the number one economic development uh, plan uh, anywhere in the world. The place that grows the best talent is going to be the place that has the best economy. And said differently, my three kids, uh, they're 11, 13, and 16. 
And um, they're not going to grow up to compete with your kids or kids in Atlanta or kids in California or uh, anywhere else in the U.S. for that matter. They, we all know they're competing with kids in India, in China, and halfway around the world. And so we need to think globally right now. And so that's the why. And to put perspective on that, if you, if you look at Florida, we have six million more people are going to live in Florida by the year 2030. We're going to pass New York sometime by... Uh, December of this year or April of next year, somewhere in Q4 through Q2. So we're, gonna be, we're about to be the third largest state in the country by population. But here's something people don't talk about. If we were a country, if Florida had, had, was a country, if you looked at our economy, $754 billion GDP, we would be the 19th largest economy on the planet. But if you look at our teachers and you look at our education system, we have some of the best in the country. Right? Top 10 in the country rated teachers for quality. Number one, workforce development system, thanks to our colleges and Workforce Florida. But if you saw the reading scores that just came out, Florida has the second highest reading scores in the world behind Finland for fourth grade reading scores. Right? So kudos to all, everyone in the education community for what we've been able to do, especially in light of all the challenges and the weight around education. I say that to say, Jackie talked about alignment and the alignment that happens. And for us in the business community, there's, there's four parts of education. There's what we call zone one, which is pre-K. There's zone two, which is K-12. There's zone three, which is higher ed. And there's zone four, which is workforce development. We've been doing everything we can for five years to try to get alignment to have pre-K talking to K-12, K-12 talking to higher ed, higher ed talking to workforce. And we've made huge strides. Uh, in that. But here's what's next, and here's why CAPE matters so much. What's next is with Common Core coming in a couple of years and with the U.S. falling out of the top 20 international metrics in reading, math, and science, what comes next is, and the reason I'm here and the reason the business community is so fired up about this, uh, and Jackie said it, it's a bipartisan issue, we have an opportunity to take the skills and the jobs that we know are going to be needed in the future and take them all the way back, if we want to, to a sixth grade level, where a sixth grader might not know what they want to be when they grow up. But parents and kids and counselors and teachers need to be able to know early what are the in-demand skills and jobs going to be, and then how do we align the needs of the workforce, right? With six million more people come, are going to live here by 2030, how do we align the needs that we know with the talent and the skills that we need to develop. And so within the, within the budget, uh, we have a way through the CAPE Act now, we have a way uh, to have those two plug in together at a much earlier year. And we just couldn't be more excited about that. You know, most people don't know Florida was the first place in the country to do these industry certifications. It was six years ago, we had the very first certification here. So we're a leader again in this space, and thanks especially to Senator Gates. I think, Senator Montford, you would say that uh, too. He's been a real leader and pioneer in this. He was a superintendent himself. And so uh, that's the reason the business community in a, in a bipartisan way would come here and say, look, what happens in third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade absolutely is going to determine uh, whether Florida wins this sort of international race for economic development might not pay off tomorrow morning or maybe by next Friday, but over the long term, there's nothing we can do, uh, not transportation, not taxes. Um, there's nothing we can do to make Florida more competitive than to get this right. And I think this, this finally is that missing piece we've had. So thank you. Thank you, uh, Mark. Uh, one of the things that I know about the chamber and listening to Mark speak is they're, they're not shy about their politics and they understand that um, you know, every decision that affects public education and affects the workforce in this state and the quality of life in this state is a political decision and that they work very, very hard to try to move their agenda of economic development and the, and the building of relationships with, with public schools and we appreciate all your efforts on that. Uh, I think that's a perfect segue to introduce my, uh, my friend, I think, of many years ago, Bill Mumford, who also goes back in the district quite a ways with me. And I make payments to him monthly in a little envelope to not tell the things that he knows. <laughs> it's kind of like the 
thing with when you buy a car. It's been going on for some time. And uh, I appreciate all of his efforts. If there's somebody that really knows the school system from the ground up and has done so many things, including, you know, at one time serving the principal in this lovely building that, by the way, Shelly Bell and your staff and everybody that put this together today, what a wonderful, wonderful looking campus and what a beautiful place to have this. And I thank you very much for that. Uh, Bill, Bill has been leading the charge here in the panhandle on a number of issues. Every now and then I tune into the Florida channel to just see how he's doing. And uh, he had a good day today, sort of. <laughs> but uh, he's doing some tremendous work for us, and I'd like for Bill to say a few words about this. Senator Mumford. Thank you, uh, and thank you, Superintendent Bonds, for, for putting this together. And it's, it's, uh, it's good to come back home. Uh, I might want to warn Shelly Bell that I was, when I was principal here, I was only 30. Uh, and so you see what a little bit of time would do to you. <laughs> so be careful. Uh, but it is good. It's good to be back home. It's good to see so many uh, people that I work with uh, over the years. And and uh, again, it's a delight to be here. Uh, I want to, uh, to underscore two or three things. One uh, is, uh, first of all, I want to extend uh, uh, President Gates' apologies for not being here this evening. Uh, he was fully intended to be here, but uh, he's as uh, you know, you can imagine. Uh, tremendous responsibility as, as uh, president of the Senate. He's, he's pulled in every different direction, and he was making every effort to be here, but he was called out of town shortly after after lunch today. Uh, so I promised him I'd give you his regards and uh, and his apologies for, for not being here. Uh, but Mark is right. Uh, a lot of this credit goes to Senator Gates. Um, when Senator Gates became uh, superintendent in Okaloosa County uh, a few years ago, he immediately uh, uh, began several different very, very innovative programs. And some of the uh, programs that he had uh, in Okaloosa County was certainly uh, akin to what, what we're talking about tonight. Uh, and he and I have been, uh, we've known each other now for a number of years. And I remember distinctly one time when we were both superintendents, uh, he said, you know, what we really need to do is try to get a hold of the State Department of Education and let's change some things around. And uh, little did he nor I know at the time that we both uh, be in the Senate together. Um, and uh, but any, anyway, we, it's, it's, uh, we're very blessed to have uh, the president of the Senate having an education and background. He also has an education in business and health uh, as well. So he brings to the table a tremendous amount of experience, uh, which has been able to help us in a lot of different ways. And when he and I began uh, discussing this issue couple of years ago, uh, along with Mark and, and others, uh, we knew that we were on, on the right path. Uh, some of you, I think, may agree with me that for whatever reason, uh, a few years ago, maybe almost a generation ago, we, we began to slip into the mindset that if a child did not go to college, that, that child uh, was, not, uh, was not a success. And uh, I'm always real, real proud, uh, and have been for a number of years to point to a number of my students uh, right here from, from Godly uh, that have been very, very successful business people in this community. Uh, not because uh, they, they uh, did not go to college, but the <coughs> fact is they were very bright, very well organized, very well driven. They're just good people. Uh, three of them, three of them own their own plumbing companies right here in Tallahassee. And uh, I used to spank two of them. They will, they will tell you that. Okay. Uh, and then, but we have all kind of, of success stories. But we slipped into that mindset uh, of, of saying, you know, if you're not going to college, you know, what's wrong with you, kind of thing. And the parents were very guilty of that as well. So we, and y'all know that. Some of you, well, some of you are not old enough to remember how we slipped into that, but we did. And so, uh, so leading into 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 that, let me let me dispel a, a myth. Uh, and an era about the cake bill. Uh, some have accused us as watering down the curriculum. Some have accused us of, of watering down graduation requirements as late as today. Uh, that's far, far from being accurate. What this does is simply gives our students alternative made measures, ways, pathways, if you will, to graduation. Uh, the graduation diplomas, uh, you know, not too many years ago, uh, people question the value of a high school diploma. Uh, 
when this when this bill is passed and when this is implemented, and we're already there, quite frankly, but when this uh, when we really get this implemented in our schools throughout the state, there will be no doubt that a high school diploma from the state of Florida is very meaningful and it, it carries a tremendous message. So if you look at the Cape Bill, what you what you will see is that there are pathways, if you will, to graduation. And there's and, and that's a strengthening of our curriculum, it's a strengthening of our high school diploma, and it will send a clear message to this country and to this world. A high school diploma from Florida is exceptionally meaningful. It's always it's also good for, for those not only the, the business world, but it's also good for colleges and universities. When they look at a child's transcript, uh, they can see clearly what the emphasis is. And what we're finding and what we will see is that this will allow students to be more focused on their areas. Uh, there was some push at first that, well, you're going to make ninth grade students make a decision in ninth grade. This bill doesn't do that. This bill gives students the leeway to make decisions and changes as, as, they, as they go through, the changing the emphasis, changing their focus, and it, it will work. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, in, in the Senate today, in the Education Committee, the one piece of this bill that drew more attention and caused us to temporarily uh, pass it for, for, uh, for a while was a piece on, on, uh, on, on designation, gold designation or whatever we decide to determine it to be. Uh, that, that's, people got hung up on that, and so we temporarily passed it. It gave, uh, it gave us a couple of us enough time to, to uh, talk to the members on our committee and explain to them what, what the issue is, and we came back and passed it unanimously, thank goodness. Uh, but this bill is one of, the, one of the best pieces of work that will come out of this, this, Senate, uh, this session. But not only that, uh, I think you'll find that, that when you look back at it eight or ten years from now, I think you'll see and, and agree with us the tremendously positive impact that this, this will have, not just on the students' at grades and so on, but on their on their lives, because this will impact children's lives uh, for, forever, quite frankly. So uh, it's glad to be here. I'm looking forward to hopefully be able to answer some some questions for you. Uh, thank you, Senator Mumford, uh, and we want to say. We want to say how much we appreciate your advocacy on many issues. I know that your plate has been very full. I see you uh, trying to carry the water in some difficult agenda items, let's put it that way. And uh, I know that, I don't know if you saw in the paper the other day or maybe I heard it on the news, you know, Bill was talking about different pathways to success. The young man in England that created the app that he sold for what they're estimating at $30 million. Now, you know, for David Clark at uh, Henry Filer Junior High School in Hialeah, Florida, that was shop class to go be an auto mechanic. And, you know, there's only so many lamps you can make for your mother out of a discarded bowling pin before people think that there's really no market for that. Uh, but today, I know in Europe and other places I've been studying, you know, they. Uh, eighth graders going into computer programming and writing uh, writing uh, work in, in computer technology and it's an incredible thing and that's kind of some of the ideas we have in our technology pieces. To talk a little bit about the district's perspective and the things that we're doing here I'd like to bring the superintendent up again, Jackie Ponce. Thank you Dave. Again I, I just wanted to thank our, our panelists that are here today and, and to just to make a few comments that, that I think are real real important. Uh, one thing is our, our local chamber and our local business community, they really get it, and we really appreciate that. You know, recently uh, we just went out to the voters with a half-penny sales tax, which we passed almost 67, 68, 9 percent. And, and if you take a minute just to reflect and think about that, that's Republicans, Democrats, and Independents voting for that. It's not just something that the Democrats get together and pass. It's a community that passes that. So our business uh, community, our EDC, they get it. And this ties into everything that they believe in. And that's why I'm supporting it and why I think it's so important. You talk about the Cape Act deals directly with the planning between the business community and the education community. What type of educational system would we have if we aren't planning with our business community about the jobs of the future? 
recently we had the opportunity uh, with our EDC and with our chamber, we have a corporation that's moving down to Tallahassee that has 60 to 70 possible employees that will be going with them. And they wanted to hear about our school system. Well, Dr. Wills went up with Sue Dick. We sent somebody up there to talk to them because we want those individuals to move to our community. We want to talk to them about what we have going on in our community that's different. And anybody would, that would think that in any way this bill waters down uh, graduation requirements, uh, that's ridiculous. You know, Mark Wilson, Bill Mufford, President Murdoch, they would not be supporting anything like that. What it does, and, and the simpler we make it, I think it's easier to understand, this just creates multiple pathways. And it also makes us recognize what are the industry level certifications that we're not only going to need in this community, but what are we going to need in this state and in this country? And I tell people to think about if we don't offer our children these opportunities, somebody else is going to offer them in another area, in another town, in another place. And that would just put our state further behind. So that's why I believe so strongly in this. And I remember when we started this at Godby, when we first started this, and we said we're going to offer industry level certification, and uh, Ms. Bowen and Ms. Butler are here tonight, and they went with me, and we looked at Griffin, and we looked at Riley, and we looked at Godby just to start this several years ago. And we said we can create this technology corridor right here to start with this, and the kids will come. And again, at the closing tonight, we'll talk about that, but now we're able to offer these type of certifications. And what's exciting to me, is we're getting ready to see that alignment. When I was in front of the state board the other day, we we're talking about how important it is uh, for reading, writing, math, science, and this transition that we're doing uh, to Common Core and, and eventually the, the park that will come online that we know is gonna be very difficult for our students. There's not any better way to get ready for that than to have a vast curriculum that offers these type of certifications because we know that just giving kids extra reading, writing, and math doesn't necessarily make them successful in that. But when we teach our children to love to read and to enjoy reading, they become better readers. Same thing with this industry certification. You know what we've got to do a better job of is to recognize the areas that we need to improve. And one of them is convincing our children and making sure that they understand the value of these certifications. I think as a superintendent, I've got to do a better job of that to make sure they understand it because education is not the same way today as it was 10 years ago. And I think that's our challenge, the individuals that are in this room and in this community is that we need to be constantly talking about that. You know, what is the value of these certifications? You know, when you walk out of here at Godby High School and you've got an industry certification in technology and there's several of them here we'll talk about tonight, what does that put on your plate as a student that you're able to accomplish now as you move into the workforce? It certainly doesn't mean that you can't go out with President Murdaugh and, and move forward uh, and go to college and do that, but you might decide that you want to enter the workforce right now, and that's the decision that you should be able to make. Again, I thank all of you uh, for being here tonight. Uh, it, it always makes me be, be very proud to be the superintendent. When we have a meeting like this. We have so many people that show up. And uh, also the fact, uh, the support that we get from our business community. It's pretty incredible. Uh, uh, we have gone through some difficult times, but I think going through difficult times makes you stronger, makes you realize what's important, and it makes you understand the important aspect of aligning your curriculum so we can be ready for the jobs of the future. So thank you all for being here, I appreciate it. We have a few questions that were turned in ahead of time and I also know that there may be some of you that have questions. Uh, some of the ones that uh, we talked about earlier this afternoon uh, have been answered in your presentations and we appreciate that. Uh, before I go to these, though, would somebody like to lead off with a question to any of our panelists that you may have before I ask a, a couple of these? The line starts. No. <laughs> All right. Well, let's 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 talk about a couple of things. There was a question specifically that somebody asked, and I think this is probably directed to our our dear friend from the uh, from the chamber. What types of jobs? 
will benefit from uh, Cape Academy graduates, do you think, Mr. Wilson? Well, I, I think it's all the way across the spectrum. We talked, you talked about plumbers right here. We've got computer engineers. I think the reality of it is, you know, when I graduated high school, um, you didn't need a whole lot of specialized training to go right into work in a manufacturing operation, for example. You, know, you try that today, and you're going to have to be sent away for. for you're going to be. You're going to have to spend a year with him to get training. And I think what this allows us to do is is uh, I'm talking about from sign companies to manufact to manufacturers to uh, you name it. Everything uh, uses technology today. And um, I think what we have the opportunity here to do is to push further back to the younger years. To say, here are the things, here are the skills that we need, here are the in-demand jobs. So I can be talking with my 13-year-old and 16-year-old about, hey, here are some options that you have, and if you think you might be interested in this, here's what we can be doing today. Not so that you can have a job in eight years, but so that you can, you can actually two years from now be ready to go. So I don't, I think it would be a mistake to try to say, it's a, it's a, it's a, if you look at it, all the jobs as a pie, I think it would be a mistake to say we're talking about this type of job. I think that almost all jobs in the future are going to require more sophistication. Kids are going to have to know how to solve problems and how to think. And I think that these industry certifications uh, are really geared toward that. So I, I think it would be a mistake to try to pigeonhole it into it's a, cert, it's a couple of SIC codes or a couple of industries. I, I, think that there's, uh, I think there are going to be hundreds and hundreds of certifications by the time this is done. Okay. Senator Mumford. Thank you, Dave. Let, let, let me just add to, to what Mark just said. I think what, what, we're, uh, what we don't want to miss is the fact that, that the industry certification uh, programs that we're looking at, these, these are not easy courses. Uh, if you look at the reading level requirement that's required just to repair a car today, for example, I mean, you know what it's like. I can't eat, well, I don't want to tell you what I can do. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but it's, these are not watered down curriculum, I, and I keep emphasizing that. These industry certification pro uh, programs, are, they're difficult. And what, we're, what we know will happen are, is that those students who we know will go to college, who want to go to college, will also be taking courses in, 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 these, in these certification programs as well. But let, let me tell you who I believe this will really help. Those of you who worked in schools for a long time, you know and can remember specifically students who were very, very bright, good kids, smart kids, but they just didn't want to sit in a seat all day, right? And, and what we didn't provide a lot of our students in, in the years past is an opportunity that they'll find here, an opportunity to really to be challenged, but to be challenged in a way differently than they have in the past. You'll find some of our best and brightest kids will be elected to go into some of these certification uh, programs. And the beauty of this is that, that many of our students who can't afford to go to college full time, regardless of the assistance they may get from scholarships and other ways, they will have an opportunity to work part time and go to school part time and make make doggone good money and that's what it's all about so if you look at if you look at one thing that, that it does it really opens up a, a new world of opportunities for a lot of students quite frankly who have been shut out in the past and this is this is a piece of it sometimes I don't think we recognize as much for those students for those students who need that extra help this this bill will do it this bill will provide that opportunity one thing I, I think that Senator's touching on that's very important that we sometimes forget in education is how important the interest level for the classes that the kids are taking, how important that is for graduation. Uh, we've known one of the things over the years that the worst thing you can do for children is eliminate fine arts courses. You know, if you keep your arts in your schools, kids want to come to school, they want to be part of it. Some of these certifications these students are interested in at sixth grade you know at fifth grade they're ready to go they're they're in love with technology they want to be part of that so we can actually take the technology or the industry level certification in those areas or other areas and offer them the students and it will improve graduation rates 
it's not watering down graduation requirements it's keeping students in school in areas that they're very interested in and also letting them understand the type of job that this will lead to and also the type of, of salary they could make with this job so i think it will improve our graduation rates uh, it's not going to make it easier but it's going to motivate our children to want to be in school and want to be part of these industry level certification courses we the, the three uh my three colleagues have spoken a lot about the importance to the students and I care deeply about the, our students as well, so I'm going to shift a little bit and add a dimension to the conversation. You know, we do what we do for a reason, and if we put it in the terms of what does this contribute to the economic prosperity of our region, then we need to remember that what these certifications do is they deliver people into the workforce that then can help the profitability of the companies that they work for, that then help those companies grow and expand and be more productive in our community and add jobs to our community. So we're, there is an outcome uh, associated with these opportunities that our students are gonna have that, that grows the economy of our region and offers more people jobs. One of the things I saw in the Wall Street Journal the other day was a graph, and this is not anecdotal information, this is information that has been measured and it showed the trajectory of people in the workforce today where they started what they learned and what they've grown to be able to do and one of the interesting things is we all know somebody I know some people very intimately who spent a lot of time in college and earned degrees and are deeply in debt for their college degrees and they have some very interesting learning experiences and some wonderful talent and wonderful degrees but no job and in the graph it showed skill levels of people who had accomplished things much like we're talking about here today and it showed that you know you can argue how much money you make at the end of the road but that wasn't what this graph was about this graph was about who is getting the jobs out there today and what types of jobs are needed in our economy and many of the things that you gentlemen spoke of are directly linked to that because these are people that have figured out ways to learn skills at a very early age that are marketable skills and the business community is looking for those skills. And I mean, it's great you know, to have a, a degree in you know, Western Civ, but you, you don't necessarily want to just wander aimlessly around your parents' house for 20 years you know, trying to find something to do and pay back that student loan. So you know, it, it was a real eye-opener to a lot of folks when we had a discussion about it the other day. And I think we're speaking to some of those kinds of things today with marketable skills and things that, that students can learn that are good for them. One of the things that I want to kind of end this part and bring up our, our two uh, principles in just a minute, but somebody asked, and this is a very important uh, question, how can the community help support these endeavors and can they volunteer for things like, you know, job shadowing or, any, you know, what, what can community members do? And many of them are in the room today, you think, and anybody can start that would like to. What can we do to help move this? You know, sometimes some of our best ideas never get enough chance to grow before we flip. Somebody told me the other day, they said, the only thing we've ever been consistent about in public education, philosophy, and movement is our inconsistency. So what we're trying to do is to keep a plan going that means something and, and, and carry it through. What can the community do to help? Anybody want to start with that? Uh, Dr. Murda? I'll, I'll be happy to jump into that one um, because we have a, a very interested and, and engaged community. We, we push at the college a concept called civic engagement and or service learning. The idea being that, that we should be thinking, all of us, everybody in this room, we should be thinking of the community as a classroom. Uh, we should be looking for opportunities to have internships, learning, looking for opportunities for our students who are going through these academies to shadow, to, to uh, work with the companies that are going to be looking for their skills. Uh, those are the kinds of, of things that, that will appeal to those kids who don't want to sit behind a desk for, for however many hours we ask them to during a, during a day. And I believe what we need is a structured approach to invite the community in and create those partnerships that result in, in these meaningful paid or unpaid internships. But again, opportunities for students 
to be in the community, opportunity for uh, businesses to engage with our students uh, and uh, improve everybody's outcome, quite frankly. Okay. Yes. Yeah, Mark, thanks. Mark. I, would, I would actually, um, I would echo that, but I would say I, if I had one request, it would be to try to help to change the conversation. Um, we, t we all talk about what's going on today in our communities and in our schools. But if, if we can talk with our kids and with each other, whether it's at the dinner table or whether it's at a business meeting or a little league game, if we could talk with each other about the future, right? About what's going on in the world and what our future is. I mean, I, I sometimes catch myself talking to my kids about what my life was like when I was their age. And then I think, you know, is that even valuable or interesting to anybody but me? And how much more uh, valuable it is to them to talk about what life's going to look like when they're my age, right? And what's going on in the world. And so, you know, the truth is, um, you know, we have over 40,000 STEM degree jobs vacant in Florida today. The reason is we weren't able to predict that we were gonna need that. And so we weren't able to talk to anybody about, hey, in five years, here's some needs that we're gonna have. So right now we're caught between, uh, the, you know, we, we don't really have an unemployment problem as much as we have a skills gap problem. And this gets to, so changing the conversation, I would say, and I, just to, uh, India, for example, graduates more English speaking engineers in a year than the U.S. graduates college kids, right? So we got to talk about what's going on in the world and we got to talk about why this matters. And I'll, I'll end with this and why I, I hope we can just change the conversation to be about the future. In the past, people went where the job was. I bet most of you in this room, when you were coming out of high school or if you went to college, coming out of college, you, you thought about the industry, you thought about the job, and you were willing to go wherever it was you know, New Jersey or Minnesota or some crazy place because that's what we did. But that's all flipped on its head now. And in the future, companies are locating where the talent is. And if you don't believe me, look at Research Triangle Park in Atlanta and Silicon Valley and Boston and everywhere else. Florida has to figure out that, you know, we, we don't need to educate kids and then let them, you know, think they're gonna go somewhere else. We need to start anchoring ourselves around our kids and their education and then let the let the companies come to where the pockets of talent are so my request would be let's change the conversation let's not talk about the way it used to be because it's never going to be that way again and if we're all talking with each other everywhere little league games tennis you know you name it let's let's talk with our kids and with each other about you know what's Tallahassee going to look like in 10 years you know, ask Sue Dick how many people are going to live here in 2020 and how many jobs there's going to be and what the average wage is and what are the jobs going to be and what are the skill sets going to be? What do our fourth grade reading scores need to be in order to put Leon County uh, on the map to be the number one place in Florida where, where we would want this? If we could do that, I think all this other stuff about how just sort of magically takes care of itself. Anybody else want to add anything? Or you I'll just add, uh, help get this bill passed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I know that's your focus. You know, you're, it, we appreciate all that because, like I said before, the politics of this are critical. And, and, I, and I think just as citizen lobbyists and people that understand these issues can do whatever you can do as you speak up and talk about it. Uh, Jackie, you want to add well, I think one thing Mark's touching on I think is real important, too, is communication. I think uh, making sure that we're communicating uh, as a community uh, I use Sue as an example. When things are going on related to economic development in the community, she's in touch with the school system about the role we can play. And the same thing when it comes to a, a good bill like this that's coming in front of the legislature, uh, we should make sure that we stand up and show real leadership and not try to take every issue that comes up and try to make it a partisan issue. You know, we got people on the panel here, you know, I'm a Democrat, we have Republicans, we have independents, but we're real good at being partisan. You know, we can find a way not to get something accomplished. And that's one of the things that I'm very proud of Bill Mumford for as our superintendent and as our leader is he's found a way to solve some of these problems. And I think that's how we have to be as a community. We have to be willing to solve problems. And some of these that when we do solve them, you don't make everybody happy and everybody doesn't come away with everything that they want. 
But in the end, if we're focusing on what's best for our children and what's best for our children's future, I think that makes our system better, not only in Leon County, but throughout the state. I think it's important. I caught a hand right here. Yes, sir. Would you like to? One question I said, Jack Williams, certified ASE master technician for the last 46 years, also an airframe power plant license. Okay? I have a 15 year old who goes to Godby here, honorable student, very involved with the school, very involved with the community, traveling to different elementary schools, introducing fifth graders to the aviation industry through model aviation. And he's very involved with that, as well as with an aeronautics club, okay? He ran into a stumbling block. He's very involved with me in building cars, be it a show car, a hot rod, whatever it is. He loves it, as well as his 19-year-old, okay? He wanted to attend the TCC, or likely, either one, whichever one offered it, the automotive course. The stumbling block was he couldn't do it till the 11th grade. Mm -hmm. Is there any way that can be eliminated? For students who are that involved with a particular call for it or trade, all right, that would boost children to contain this kind of interest. In. Well, first, let me say I think we are not doing a good enough job dealing with ex what we call acceleration mechanisms, dual enrollment, advanced, you know, AP, and a variety of things, because we seem to focus on all the kids who are having a hard time, and we don't don't enough spend enough time on kids who are sitting there doing this ready to move um, I don't know what the, what the current prohibitions are for that but but I certainly would be excited to work with the superintendent and anybody else to try to figure out a way to help kids who are ready to move to move um, happy to look into that for you at whatever grade level be it 10th grade like he is right now. I, I do. I think we, we're, we're getting to a point where we understand that, that, that not everybody progresses at the same rate. Right. And we're getting to a point where we understand the, the distinctiveness of competencies that can be measured that help us decide how, how and how fast to move yes. people forward. Uh, I'm a big, big fan of that. Um, so I'd be happy to work with anybody to see what our options are and to see how to do something to do that. So for something else I would like to say, for the last five years I've had four children go here. I've seen changes in the school that are phenomenal. Thank you for your comments. Very, very well put. Uh, there's no other questions. I'm going to bring up a couple of people that you want. Oh, yes, one in the back. Yes, ma'am. Put things in place for us as parents so that we can actually start saying, okay, uh, if you own a business and you have an engineering school, why can't I have him to mentor with someone in his engineering school and maybe he just go for a summer and just model with them to see all about what engineering is about. I find that very lacking because he's so enthused at building airplanes and model cars and things like that. But I want Tim to be able to, I see him taking this into the next century. And that's what you're talking about, building our next future. Well, as parents, give us some resources so that we can see this future along with you to build our children so that we can give them the solid foundation that they can go into society and be able to be productive for what we need in the next century. Yeah, Superintendent I'll talk to you. First, uh, <clears throat> thank you for your input on that, and I agree with you. And I think both of these touched on a subject that the individual needs of individual students. And one of the things I think this bill is going to do uh, will be more connection, like I said before, between the uh, workforce development, between the business community, so we could provide opportunities like that for mentors. Uh, we were talking about mentors today. In fact, we had a meeting on mentors, uh, that, uh, how many mentors that we had and how we can design a program to increase the number of mentors that we have in our schools. Now, with a bill like this, we can even go to the next step, which would be if we're going to provide a mentor, let's provide a mentor in engineering that would really help your child to be even more interested or give him the tools that he would need to be even more successful. I think another thing that we have to recognize now is the value of school choice. You know, there were times when we just said that every child would go to a school just within your community. And while I believe in community schools, and I think they're very important, I also think we should recognize the individual needs of individual students and allow them to have choices. 
different choices for different opportunities. Godby's a choice school. We've got choice schools throughout uh, Tallahassee. And I think they're very, very important. And I think we have to recognize that. So I agree with both of you that we have to look at the individual needs of individual students and not just look at it, having a rule because it was in place for a lot of years and to find out why it's in place and if it can benefit students by modifying the rule. Well, that's a perfect segue to our next speakers because uh, we want to talk about a couple of schools here in Leon County that are doing some very special things. Uh, and I'd like to have Shelly Bell from Godby High School, our host tonight. Host, hostess with the most. Good evening, I'm really excited to be here. Godby High School is like a little hidden gem here in Tallahassee because we offer some very unique programs that other schools just don't have right now. Um, and I'm gonna tell you about the different pathway programs that we have that offer industry level certification. Right now we have three career pathways that give students an opportunity to earn industry level certification. It allows them to be competitive in today's global economy. These career pathways provide choices that allow our students opportunities to graduate from high school with a plan for the future and prepared to enter a post-secondary institution or the workforce. The programs that we have, we have Academy of Finance, Academy of Information Technology, and our newest program, which we're very excited about, is our Pathways to Engineering program, which specializes in computer integrated manufacturing. The work our students are that they're doing right now here at Godby is really incredible. We invite the community to come out and take a look at the programs that we have, the facilities, it really is impressive. In our Academy of Finance, and if you've been in Tallahassee for a couple of years, you might know that our finance kids, all during tax season, they're sitting in our media center every Tuesday night for about 12 weeks doing taxes for members of the community free. So they have that skill. They're able to come, you can come in, they can do your taxes. In our Academy of Finance, they provide hands-on experience, allowing our students the unique opportunities to learn numerous aspects of finance, and the program also prepares students for specific jobs throughout the financial industry. So whether they're ready to go to college or move into a career, they have those skills. The certifications they can earn, uh, Microsoft Office, Office Specialist and Voluntary Income Tax Assistant, as well as QuickBooks. So they can leave here with several industry level certifications just from that academy. The next one we have, we have the Academy of Information Technology, specializes in three different areas. We have digital design, networking, and web design. The things that our students are able to produce that are in our Academy of Information Technology, incredible. They're doing video editing, they're making web pages, they're doing digital design, they're designing things for other businesses, for other schools, very impressive. And they can earn several different certifications, and many do. We have the Adobe Certified Associate, which includes Photoshop, Dreamweaver, Flash, and Premiere. We have the Certified Internet Web Professional, CompTIA, Network Plus, and then the Microsoft Office Specialist. Our Pathways to Engineering, our newest program, um, they're working very closely right now. We've already established uh, partnerships with FAMU, TCC, and FSU. We started this program in August, so it's in its first year. Um, students are engaged in hands-on projects with a focus on the fundamental concepts of engineering design analysis, robotics, the production processes and systems used in the advanced manufacturing industry. Students can graduate from our program, move on to receive to the college level or again out in the industry. Um, so this year already our students at Godby High School have earned over 140 career level certifications. And their, uh, their goal we think will earn about 320 or 350 certifications. So it's pretty impressive um, and each year we continue to grow the programs. We have more and more students that are wanting to come to Godby to take advantage Right now, we're seeing a lot of interest in our engineering program. Something kids are interested in. They see the robotics. They see you know, that they can build the robots, and it gets them interested in the engineering. Um, one of the neat things is that our students that can come here, and they can come from anywhere in Leon County. We are a choice program, and we invite kids to come all the time. Come, just take a look at what Gabby has to offer. But the key is that we want our students to be ready for college or for a career. 
and through our academy programs they're able to offer both of those pathways to our students and we have students that are coming out already more marketable than other students ready to go into the career force because of the industry level certifications that they're able to get here at Godby High School. So it's just a little snapshot of what we've got going on over here at Godby. We invite anyone to come out, take a look, take a tour of our facilities. Um, it's impressive and the work that these students are doing and the skills they're learning is truly remarkable. So I'm glad to be part of it. Okay, and I'm gonna pass it over. Thank you. Thank you, Shelly. Wonderful. And we have a program that's going on at one of our middle schools that we're extremely proud of, too. And I'd like to bring up the principal from um, Griffin Middle School, Wynn Thomas. Well, there you are. You know, I keep looking back there. I knew you were somewhere. Thank you, David. For the panelists, I have a presentation that we'll be showing. I guess we can see just a little bit through the, the glare of the sun. but. Um, I count it an honor to stand in your presence today and I'd like to say thank you so much, Superintendent Pons, for your leadership, for your visionary leadership, because without the vision that you've brought to the district, especially to my life, I wouldn't be standing here today. So thank you so very much. And to our other panelists, Senator Monfort, Chamber President Mark Wilson, Wilson and TCC President Murdaugh, I take great pride in sharing the information about Griffin's humble story with you tonight. Griffin was founded in the early 1920s as a boarding school for the Primitive Baptist Association. And the founding name, Griffin Normal and Industrial Institute, honored the Reverend Henry Griffin. In 1934, the Leon County Board of Public Instruction assumed partial responsibility for Griffin while acquiring full responsibility for the school site in 1955. Well, in 2008, the Florida Department of Education designated Griffin as a technology magnet school. And with that designation, the physical plant and the curricular offerings metamorphosized this program into an information technology choice school with a career and professional education, or as we've been hearing tonight, Cape Model School Academy. This academy has earned recognition through media and public speaking opportunities that Griffin would have no otherwise had an opportunity to experience. And we have closely worked with the Whetstone Group out of Atlanta, Workforce Florida, Certiport, and Microsoft. Our state-of-the-art facility houses 35 intelligent classrooms, seven state-of-the-art computer labs, eight mobile laptop carts, and 10 mini classroom labs. We embrace the concept of college ready for some and career ready for all. Unique to Griffin this year is that we are one out of 15 middle schools in the state of Florida who has a designated Cape Academy. And Griffin is a designated CertiPort testing site where students can earn their industry standard certifications for high skill and high wage job opportunities, which, does, which do meet the demands of this um, workforce in the state of Florida and other employees and in industries. Students enrolled in this academy can earn Microsoft certification because this grassroots effort has plunged our program into another cutting edge phenomenon in that 20 of our students in the current cohort have earned a total of 40 certifications, a feat which has never been accomplished by middle schoolers before now. These certifications range from Microsoft Office, PowerPoint, and Excel, and students are currently working on Outlook certification. Nine of our 20 students have earned at least two certifications, while six of those students, an additional six of the students have earned three certifications in Microsoft, which makes them specialist certified. This rigorous and relevant skill set allows our students to acquire the necessary foundation they need to compete with their contemporaries. Our goal, as stated before, is 50 certifications by the end of the year. And mind you, we began the certification process during the month of September. 
by December, we had earned 39 of those certifications. The next phase of our venture will be to broaden the opportunities within the community for job-related experiences. And because of the acclaim of the Griffin Program and the, and the Cape Academy, we've been featured a number of times in the media. We've had um, opportunities to meet with Governor Rick Scott at the Governor's Mansion with, along with Workforce Florida. And we will address the um, at the Capitol on April 10th in, recogni in recognition of Microsoft Education Day. We've been working with Ms. Dick to make sure that we are keeping our program on the cutting edge because our skill set is very important for our students to compete globally. And it is an honor to serve as the, uh, as the principal of this fine program. Thank you. Thank you, Gwen. As we wrap it up tonight, I just wanted to, to add that, you know, this is my 40th year working in and around the school system in many different roles. And one thing I knew back in 1972 when I walked out of FSU into Bellevue Middle School as a teacher was that this was a community that cared deeply about the quality of life here and cared very deeply about their public schools. And while there's been many incarnations of the things that we thought might be the right way to go, with what we did with our schools. There's been many changes, both in their design and implementation and what we've learned about the way students learn and how fast our, our society has changed. Uh, we have always been on the cutting edge. We've been blessed to have very talented teachers, very supportive parents, incredible leadership, and, and we have not uh, changed in that. And the history of this district has been one of great pride. When I think of co-chair, Lewis Butler, and I think of uh, Joy and her chairmanship of the board, and I think of the talented people in the business community here and the leadership of the people at this table and our superintendent. I know that we're gonna accomplish great things, but I also need to ask you, as we all will today, for your help. Wherever you talk to people at your church, wherever you talk to people in your community, wherever you speak about the bills that maybe come before our legislature that have an influence over the way these things are gonna go, if you have the compulsion to write a letter to the editor or something, whatever you can do to help us move the ball, because the very future of our, of our community and of our country, our state, depends on this. And I think your presence here tonight speaks volumes about how important this is, because I've heard there's actually basketball games on that have some import. But I, want to, but, I, but, I, but I want to say to you, uh, thank you so much for your support and everything that you do for our kids every day in whatever role you play. And uh, with that, I'm going to bid you good evening and drive safely. And we'll be around if you want to chat a little bit. Thank you very much for coming.